India has successfully test-fired the Agni Prime missile from a rail-based mobile launcher. marking a significant advancement in its strategic capabilities. This development enhances the missile's mobility and lethality, posing substantial challenges for Pakistan by enabling rapid, unpredictable deployments across vast territories. Building on that breakthrough, let's explore the full scope of this achievement, starting with the missile's core technical specifications drawn from reliable defense analyses. The Agni Prime, designated as Agni-P, measures approximately 10.2 meters in length with a diameter of 1.2 meters, making it more compact than predecessors like the Agni-3, which stretches to 17 meters. Its total weight stands at around 11,500 kilograms, a reduction achieved through advanced composite materials in both stages, which eliminate corrosion issues and have the mass compared to older models. Propulsion relies on a two-stage solid-fueled system, where aluminum serves as the primary fuel mixed with high-energy binders and oxidizers, providing superior thrust and eliminating the need for on-site fueling. This solid propellant design allows for long-term storage without degradation, ensuring the missile remains operational for extended periods. The first stage delivers the initial boost, propelling the missile into the upper atmosphere with composite casings that enhance structural integrity under extreme stresses. The second stage refines the trajectory, incorporating flex nozzle thrust vectoring for precise mid-flight adjustments. Unlike liquid-fueled systems that require hours of preparation, this setup enables launches within minutes, a critical factor in high-stakes scenarios. Range capabilities span from 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers, optimized for payloads up to 1,500 kilograms, allowing flexibility in mission profiles. For instance, with a lighter payload, it can extend closer to the upper limit, while heavier configurations suit shorter, high-impact strikes. Guidance technology represents a leap forward, featuring a dual-redundant ring laser gyro-based inertial navigation system combined with micro-inertial navigation for redundancy. This is augmented by GPS and India's NAVI-IC satellite systems, achieving a circular error probable of about 10 meters, far superior to the 2540-meter SEP of earlier Agni variants. Such accuracy means the missile can target specific infrastructure with minimal collateral, enhancing its utility in both conventional and nuclear roles. The warhead options include maneuverable reentry vehicles, equipped with four delta fins for terminal phase evasion of anti-missile defenses. These MARVs can perform evasive maneuvers, complicating interception by systems like those Pakistan deploys. Canisterization is another hallmark feature, where the missile is sealed in a hermetically protected tube, facilitating cold launch ejection via gas pressure before engine ignition. This reduces the launch site's thermal footprint, making detection by infrared satellites more difficult. The canister mounts on a tandem launcher, supporting salvo firings of two missiles in quick succession, which could saturate enemy defenses. Drawing from Agni-4 and Agni-5 technologies, the Agni-Prime incorporates improved propellants and control mechanisms, resulting in a system that's lighter, faster, and more reliable. Historically, the Agni series traces back to the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program initiated in the 1980s, with Agni entering service in 2009 as a single-stage missile with a 701200 km range. Agni-2 followed in 2006, extending to 2,35,00 km with a two-and-a-half-stage design. Agni-3, inducted in 2011, pushed boundaries to 3,500,000 km, while Agni-4 and Agni-5 brought ranges up to 4,000 km and 7,800,000 km, respectively the latter with multiple independently targetable reentry vehicles. Agni Prime, developed since 2016, serves as a backward integration, replacing Agni-1 and Agni-2 with modern tech to counter evolving threats. It's part of India's strategy to address area denial weapons, inspired by responses to China's DF-21D and DF-26B missiles. 
the rail-based launch introduces a paradigm shift, utilizing a custom carriage that integrates seamlessly with India's extensive railway infrastructure. This platform, likely built on an 8x8 axle system adapted for rails, allows movement without altering existing tracks. Unlike road mobile launchers constrained by terrain and visibility, rail systems leverage India's 68,000 km of tracks, the fourth largest network globally, for nationwide dispersal. The test on September 24, 2025, demonstrated launches from operational conditions, with the system moving freely on standard rails. This mobility enables positioning in remote areas, such as border regions near Pakistan, without relying on vulnerable highways. Advantages over traditional methods are manifold. Road transporters, like those for Agni-1, face limitations in Mu, entainous or flooded zones, where trucks might bog down or require escorts. Rails, however, offer consistent speed and capacity, covering hundreds of kilometers swiftly while blending with civilian traffic. Tunnels provide natural concealment. With over 5,000 railway tunnels in India, launchers can hide from satellite imagery, emerging only for firing. This reduces vulnerability to preemptive strikes, as adversaries must monitor vast networks rather than predictable depots. Reaction times drop significantly, from hours for road setups to minutes for rail, thanks to the canister's ready state. Globally, rail mobile missiles aren't new. Russia's RT-23 Maladitz operated from 1987 to 2005, using disguised trains for ICBMs. The U.S. explored the Peacekeeper rail garrison in the 1980s, but abandoned it due to costs. India's adaptation suits its geography, with dense rail lines in strategic areas like Rajasthan and Punjab, bordering Pakistan. This system enhances second strike capability under India's no first use policy, ensuring survivability in nuclear exchanges. Lethality amplifies through this mobility. The Agni Prime's unpredictability forces enemies to allocate resources for constant surveillance, diluting their offensive focus. With a 2,000 km range, it covers all of Pakistan from central Indian bases, targeting cities like Islamabad, 1,200 km away, or Karachi, 1,500 km. Payload versatility includes conventional options, high explosive unitary for precision hits, penetration warheads for bunkers, cluster munitions for troop concentrations, incendiary for fuel depots, or thermobaric for fortified structures. Nuclear variants could deliver yields up to 50 kilotons, based on India's tested devices. The maneuverable re-entry vehicle adds another layer, allowing the warhead to zigzag during descent, evading interceptors like Pakistan's HQ-9 or Ababil systems. Salvo mode could launch pairs, overwhelming radar with multiple threats. Cold launch minimizes signatures, giving less warning, critical against time-sensitive defenses. Compared to fixed silos, which are sitting ducks, or road mobiles detectable by drones, rail offers dispersion across thousands of kilometers, making total neutralization improbable. For Pakistan, this poses the gravest challenge yet. Their territory fits entirely within the missile's envelope, unlike China's vast expanse where Agni Prime falls short. Key assets, air bases in Peshawar, naval facilities in Gwadar, or command centers in Rawalpindi, are all reachable. Pakistan's Shaheen-3, with a 2,750 km range, is road mobile but lacks rail equivalents, making it more trackable via India's surveillance satellites like Kartasat. Economic strains, with Pakistan's defense budget at $7 billion versus India's $75 billion in 2025, hinder matching this innovation. Strategically, it disrupts Pakistan's calculus. Their doctrine emphasizes early escalation, but Agni Prime's survivability deters preemption. Recent tensions, including 2025 border clashes, highlight this. India can now rapidly reinforce Western fronts via rail, positioning missiles near the line of control. Analysts at the International Institute for Strategic Studies note it replaces less accurate Agni-1 and Agni-2, improving kill efficiency with smaller yields. This conserves fissile material allowing India a larger arsenal without proportional resource hikes. Broader implications extend to regional balance. While primarily anti-Pakistan, it indirectly counters China by freeing longer-range assets like Agni-5 for eastern threats. 
Induction under the Strategic Forces Command, post-2023 night trials, means operational deployment soon. Future variants may include anti-ship capabilities, expanding roles against naval targets. Development milestones underscore reliability. First flight in 2021, user trials by 2023, and now rail integration. DRDO's chromium-based nose cone coating, patented in 2008, boosts range by 40% via drag reduction at hypersonic speeds. This tech, applied here, enhances performance without enlarging the missile. In deployment, the rail launcher is self-sustained, with independent power, communication, and fire control systems. It doesn't require track modifications, using standard gauges for seamless integration. During peacetime, it masquerades as freight evading scrutiny. Wartime scenarios allow dispersal to multiple sites, complicating enemy targeting. Pakistan's countermeasures might involve enhancing ISR, but their satellite capabilities lag. This asymmetry pressures their economy, potentially diverting funds from conventional forces. For India, it aligns with minimum credible deterrence, ensuring retaliation without aggression. Technically, the propulsion's composite binders provide higher specific impulse, translating to better fuel efficiency. The inertial system's ring lasers detect minute orientation changes, feeding data to onboard computers for real-time corrections. NAVIC integration adds resilience. See against GPS jamming, a tactic Pakistan might employ. Warhead mating occurs pre-launch in the canister, slashing preparation time. This hermetic seal protects against humidity, vital in India's monsoonal climate. The launcher's mobility extends to rail ferries for island deployments, though primarily land-based. Comparatively, Agni Prime's 11,500 kg mass is lighter than Agni 2's 16,000 kg, easing rail transport. Its two stages contrast Agni 5's 3, optimizing for medium range. Geopolitically, this test signals resolve amid Pakistan's 2025 rocket force formation. It bolsters India's triad. Land-based rails complement submarine-launched K-15s and airdropped nukes. Potential drawbacks include rail sabotage, but redundancy in India's network mitigates this. Overall, it elevates India's posture, making aggression costlier for neighbors. The Agni program's roots lie in the 1970s, when India faced embargoes post-1974 nuclear test, prompting self-reliance. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam led early efforts, evolving from Prithvi to Agni. Agni 1's 2009 induction targeted Pakistan's western regions, but its 12,000 kg weight limited mobility. Agni Prime's design addresses this, with composites reducing inertia for quicker setups. Rail advantages include load capacity. Trains handle heavier systems than trucks, though Agni Prime's lightness fits both. Speed. Rails average 80 km h versus trucks 50 km h in rough terrain. Concealment. Disguised as cargo, it avoids road checkpoints. Global examples. China's DF-41 has road rail options, but India's focus is unique to its infrastructure. Lethality details. Mar V's fins enable 30 40 degree maneuvers, dodging interceptors at Mach 5. Payload fractionation could allow submunitions for area saturation. Pakistan's perspective their Ababil Merv counters Indian defenses, but Agni Prime's accuracy neutralizes launch sites precisely. Range covers Gwadar port, disrupting CPEC. Economic impact. Pakistan's 2025 GDP struggles at $340 billion versus India's $4 trillion, limiting responses. Future, anti-ship Agni P variant could target carriers, extending naval deterrence. Induction timeline, full operationalization by 2026 with 50 plus units planned. This rail innovation cements India's edge, reshaping South Asian security.